Good afternoon, everybody. I'm coming back with another video for you guys today. So today, uh, we got back a, a PSA graded order that was submitted about 16 months ago. Uh, so these are all cards that I submitted 16 months ago. We finally got them back from PSA. And uh, uh, this order, along with my last PSA order... I got to say, I, I'm frustrated with, and in watching some other people's videos uh, and hearing their frustration, um, I just got to say, I know PSA is backlogged and I know they're trying to catch up, but I just have a feeling that they're, I, I have a feeling that they're doing some things that they shouldn't be doing to help catch up. Uh, I'm just going to say that. I just, their grading is extremely questionable in my opinion now. I've seen some people getting like, gem mint 10 orders completely back i've seen people getting fives and sixes in the cards like uh, as good as it's going to get it should be like a nine or ten uh, i've seen people getting rejected from slabbing for stupid reasons now i just i think psa is going about all, uh, catching up on their backlog all wrong and um i've never been a psa fan i'm being honest with you guys i've never been a psa fan to begin with uh, i've always not like their cases i've always not liked their labels i've always questioned uh how uh, legitimate they are as far as grading goes um i've had some issues with their authentication side as well so um you know the only reason i even spend a dime on them to be honest with you is because most people prefer them uh when they purchase but um in my honest opinion as far as uh, the order of grading companies, uh, they are actually third or fourth uh, for me. I mean, I really have them that low. I just don't like them. Uh, they've proven time and time again that they aren't doing things up to par, especially if you're considered the, the industry leader. And um, I'm just going to tell you guys, uh, again, I'm not happy with this order. And I took 16, it took 16 months for me to get it back. So uh, I don't know if you're paying top dollar now. And you're paying, you know, the $150, $200, whatever it is per card. Maybe they're legitimate with that because they're getting their full price. But it just seems like a lot of these orders that are backdated and are at the cheaper rate. Um, I, I, I question both ways. If the grades are too good and then if the grades are too bad. And then uh, some of the reasons they're not slapping cards is just a joke. So anyways, that's enough of me ranting on and on about uh, PSA and how I don't like them. So... Let's get on to showing you what these cards are. So uh, remember, again, these are from 16 months ago, guys. So the first card we got back is this 2013 Bowman Bryce Harper. Got a mint to nine. Um, again, for this modern card, I guess I'm happy with it. I was thinking it was more of a 10, but, you know, nine or 10, you know, it's a coin toss at that point. So this isn't really what I'm frustrated with. So that's all right. So we'll see. Some of these cards are going to be up for sale trying to get some money back recoup some money uh our next one is this 2016 panini prestige blue chip recruits derrick henry this got an eight um mm, I, I i would question the eight on it but you know again we're we're probably uh splitting hairs at this point but anyways this got an eight again i was hoping for nine or ten obviously for the derrick henry rookie but uh it is what it is and we will move on. As you can see, I am uh, using a Vanguard's case holders or uh, slab holders for this video. The next card we got is a 2016 Panini Prestige Andrew Luck Extra Points Blue. This got a mint nine. Um, back when I submitted this, I had been considering starting collecting Andrew Luck because I was thinking he might possibly decide to unretire and come back. Um, 16 months later, of course, we know that that's not going to happen, and he's, you know, 99.999% done, so I'm glad I didn't submit more cards of Andrew Luck, but I thought this card was a perfect candidate for a 10. It got a 9, so uh, it is what it is. Um, I think everybody, looking back 16 months, has made mistakes on their orders, but again, when you're submitting at that time period, it makes sense. When you look back on it, you know, a couple years, it, uh, sometimes it doesn't. So we got this 2016 Panini Prestige Peyton Manning. It's just a base card, Mint 9. This was also when I was deciding to start uh, trying to flip um, Superstar Hall of Fame cards, you know, because they were like $10, $12 uh, 
a card to grade with PSA. And so I was also doing that. Um, so that was the reason for submitting this Peyton, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Hoping to get a 10 to flip it and make some money. Uh, we'll see what we can do on that one, I guess. So um, the remaining cards, I'll leave those up there. The remaining cards, guys, as you guys know, I was starting a project of grading the entire 1988 top set. The entire 1988 top set. And then all of a sudden... The uh, grading fee change happened, and uh, I don't know where it's going to lead me with that set. Um, I'm about, with, with these cards that I'm going to show you right now, uh, I have about 70-ish cards of the set graded now. Of course, you all know that the set's 756, I believe. Um, and that doesn't count the traded set, which I was also going to include. But um, So I'm about 70 cards into it. Don't know what I'm going to do with the grading prices. But... Um, the cards I've gotten graded so far on the set are either through PSA or SGC. So, as you as you guys know, there's not many cards, if any, in the set worth uh, twenty five to thirty dollars grading fee. So I don't know what that's going to do. So, but these uh, these are what I had submitted for the set. So we got the uh, 1988 tops Orioles leader Eddie Murray, Cal Ripken Jr. got a mint nine, and on these guys, um, I was submitting the best example that I had um, wasn't trying to get tens on all of them or whatever I was hoping to get anything from eight and up um, but whatever the best example was is is what I was going to go with so this one got a nine our next one is Hubie Brooks got an eight And with these cards, I was I was shooting for eights and nines, hopefully, um, maybe with an outside possibility of one ten. But I was shooting for eights and nines. So, so so far so good. I looked these cards over. I think I'm a pretty good judge on the '88 top set. Um, this uh, D Dave Clark for the Indians got an eight. But there's going to be a couple coming up that just blew me away. We got the Alan Ashby, got an 8 for the Astros. And you can see these cards are all pretty much centered uh, about as good as you're going to get with the 88 top set, most of them. The next one, there's one of them that really ticked me off. So we got Joaquin Andujar got a 6. And um, the thing that irritated me about this card is... There was a little bit of damage on it, and I know for sure it was done through PSA, so I'm, I'm probably going to have to call them up. But you see this card is centered well. The corners look great. The edges look great. But when you look at the top here, right there, you can see like a thumbprint. Like someone was reaching in to pull it out of the case, and they damaged it. Because that was not there when I sent it in. Uh, I know that for sure, because when I looked them over to get the best example, I had... Uh, I have more more better examples than this one with the bend. So that really ticked me off. Um, they should have done the right thing. Um, but again, they're trying to power through their backlog, and it's just frustrating. So this one should have been an 8 or a 9, because you can look at the centering and the corners and everything else. It's, I mean, it's a great-looking card. And they damaged it and got a 6. So... That's uh, issue number one. Here's the next issue I have. Issue number two, Darnell Coles for the Pirates. This card, I looked this thing over. This card is like, uh, it's super clean, guys. I mean, look at the centering. Look at the corners, the edges, everything. And then let me show you the back. You can see the back. It's not like badly miscut. And we all know PSA... Uh, is not as stringent on the back. There's no staining. There's no nothing. I mean, it's a little off-centered on the back, but not enough to warrant a six. And this front is, I mean, solid. So, again, they're, like this is an example of their grading is just flat-out horrible, in my opinion. And it just bothers the heck out of me. So I just, I just get super frustrated with them because sometimes I just I, I question who they actually are getting to grade cards, right? Our next one is this Kent Herbeck, got a 7. Like I said, I mean, I'm not uh, super upset at a 7, 
But when I look at the centering, uh, which is a little off, but, you know, do I warrant it uh, three points? I don't think so. The uh, corners and edges look great. Here's the back for you guys. You can see the back is centered pretty well. It's it's not perfect, but it's centered pretty well. And we got a seven. I, to me, this isn't this is an easy eight, and maybe borderline nine. I don't know, but we'll see. I don't know, guys. Like I said, I I just it just frustrates me to no end. We got this uh, Lou Pinella. Lou Pinella got an eight. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it, I guess. The centering on it, like I said, is great. I mean, you're not going to find much better centering on the 88 tops. So I'm definitely happy with that. Here's the back of the card. Pretty well centered again. So, I don't know, guys. It is what it is. We have Dick Schofield. This one got an 8. Near Mint to Mint. Eight. So uh, another, another not an issue, but another part of this set is most of these cards, you know, like how many people are going to have a graded Dick Schofield? So it's not like you can just go on eBay and pick it up. So a lot of these cards I was going to have to grade anyways. Um, uh, not looking at the pop reports, but I'm guessing the pop reports are uh, anywhere from none to almost none. So um, another reason why you're going to see a lot of names here, you're like, what the heck? But it's because... Who's going to grade them, right? It's a perfect example. Bill Landrum. Bill Landrum from the Reds. 88 tops. Got an 8. And see, like this card, if you look at the centering, kind of reminds me a lot of the Kent Herbeck. It's a little bit off. It's not horrible. A little bit off. But this one got an 8. So I kind of think that's where the Herbeck should have been is an 8. But what are you going to do? I guess just got to just bite the bullet and be done with it. I don't have any other orders at PSA. Uh, I don't know if that's going to change at all. You can see this Bob Melvin got a 9. Um, for grading purposes, I don't plan on sending to PSA anytime soon. Uh, for authentication purposes, uh, I might give it one more go around through Garrett. But uh, I'm kind of frustrated with their authentication services as well. But... Um, I don't know. We'll we'll see. I think I'll definitely give it one more shot with the authentication, but I, I know the grading I'm pretty much done. I would rather go, in all honesty, I'd rather go to SGC. Uh, Beckett is now fully open, even with economy. I'd rather go with Beckett. Um, you know, I like VGT as well. Um, uh, there's just some other companies out there I'd much rather go with than PSA, in all honesty. And yeah, I might take a hit because, you know, the card isn't pulling in. Uh, here's an Oral Horsheiser for 8. The card isn't pulling in as much as it could if it was in a PSA case, but I'm also fighting that battle of do I want to give any more of my money to PSA because they keep, in my opinion, just messing things up and then letting not only myself down but others down, so I don't know. We have this Gerald Perry, 88 tops. This got a 9. It's another great example of a nice-looking 88 tops card. So I've sent in, like I said, almost 70 cards, right, for the 70 tops set, or the 88 top set that's been graded. I've sent in almost 70 cards. And out of that, I've only gotten one 10. That tells you how hard it is to get 10s on these uh, junk wax cards. And the one 10 I got was through uh, SGC. There's a couple cards that went to PSA that I thought should have been 10s. Um, and if I crack them, we'll probably get 10s from SGC. But uh, I'm just gonna, I'm not going to play that game. I'm just going to leave them as is. This is a Jeff Calhoun. Got an 8. Another great looking centered card for the most part. It's off a little bit left to right, but it's pretty good, centered, pretty well centered there. And in the last card of this submission is this 88 Tops Ed Romero. This got a 7. Again, there's a spot up here. That was not there when I sent it in, so uh, it's another frustrating part. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to start taking pictures of the stuff I send in, uh, especially if it's going to like a PSA or something, because uh, two of my two of my cards got damaged after the fact, so I don't know. So, anyways, this was a seven on the Ed Romero. Just take it and move on. And that is it, guys. That is it for this PSA reveal. Um, 
I know I was a little down on PSA, but I'm not the first one. I won't be the last one. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to express my opinion because uh, I'm just, you know, I seem to get let down more from them than I do anybody else. So, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the reveal. I hope you saw some nice cards that uh, you liked. Uh, I know there was definitely some unique ones, especially with the 88 Tops, uh, that project that I was working on. Um, but anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have a blessed evening. Until our next video, see ya.